Okay, this is going to be just a quick video on some fur. Um, I'm using the Pyromaster um, solid tip with the shade. Looks like a spade or whatever. Um, I'm using that because I want it. the sides are a little bit wider than my Optima. And for the look I'm going for, I just prefer the wider one because this is actually a pretty big piece. Um, like I said, this is just going to be a quick one on some fur because with this piece, there's two thing, two key issues I will struggle with with video. One, I don't have um, a thermostat dial where I can really do much to control the heat. So controlling the heat is more of a manual thing going fast, very little pressure. And occasionally I blow on the tip to cool it down some before I touch the wood with it. Those are the most common ways to work with single or dual heat pieces or pens because as you can see I'm still pretty dark here but it's got to go later so that's where I usually tend to blow on the tip some Always follow the direction of the fur. This line around his eye, the fur changes directions. And this area in here is actually a very light color, almost white. So as you saw, I moved really fast. I was also blowing on the tip. you can see in through here that's basically a single layer it will go darker um, and my way of building depths as some people will call it is part of layering but I'm not one to sit there and do seven or eight layers just to get it to a really dark color um you will find i don't have very much patience for that so in some ways that makes me what some would say not a very good example or teacher um but everybody's got their own style this in through here is really light colored, almost white. Um, so I won't exactly explain it to you because I'm going to be having to blow on my tip in order to get it to the right shade. Otherwise, it'll end up too dark. Um, and one trick I do use, well, not a trick, but one thing I do do to get highlights. Um, 
usually after I'm done is I will use my Dremel. And with that, I usually use one of a couple of bits. Occasionally, I will use, where's the, there, this, let me see if it'll focus. Okay, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a round bit. Um, I will use that one, or... This is another one I use, and it's not going to... This one, you will see it's got a flat end, and it's cone-shaped. I don't know if you can see it better that way with it on the wood. Um, those are the main two I use. I did just try another one the other day, which went pretty good. I just got to find it again. Which looks like it's easier said than done. Not even sure if I've got it in here where... I think it's in with my other bit set, which is not right handy. Um, it's a cylinder shape, bigger than these two, but it's just plain cylinder um, and flat on the bottom. Uh, and nice, I do that on its edge at an angle, and that seems to work pretty good. Um, and that's how I put in the highlights, depending on where I need them. Um, through here is white. And what you will see in the reference photo, you can still make out some furs and some shape. That's what people need to remember. Just because it's appears white doesn't mean it is white um all my references are put into sepia and then i adjust the highlights to whatever i need um in contrast because there's no such thing as white it's just how our eyes perceive it um just like uh, dark backgrounds or a dark animal. People are like a, if you find a, are doing a black dog, you get confused. Um, you've got to not look at the picture as a whole and look at it as more of shadows and highlights. I have done a black panther with a black background. And actually you can see it very, very clear that it is just what it's supposed to be. So you can always play with the contrasts and shadows. And as you can see, my pen's starting to get really dark um, because of the heat. So, I will do a little bit more down here, but this is where I have to stop talking.
Okay, as you see, it's very pale. It's not pure white, but it's not pure white in the reference. But one of the key things that I did forget to mention, you're looking at it sitting, what, 8 to 12 inches away from it. Um, and that's not an accurate view. For the most part, we need to be a good four feet or more. And because that's how art is supposed to be viewed, is at a distance, not right on top of it. So if you go back and if stand probably four foot or so from your piece, you will find it will probably look white. And the biggest thing, like I said, shadows and contrast. It's all an illusion that we are trying to represent and portray to our audience. And as I go slow, the pen heats up. More, more you go over each area is what's considered layering. But the more it, as long as you're going roughly the direction of the fur, it will look all right. You don't have to be perfect. Remember to get your links as well. In the reference photo here, you'll see up and through here, it's longer than on the snout or nose. And try not to be uniform as far as hair, fur, it's all the same thing. They don't start and stop in a straight line. Um, they might end in a straight line for hair if it's like a bob cut or something. But it doesn't tend to start in a straight line. few more minutes because I have to go in a little bit which is one reason why this is so short and and for this yes I do have blobs when I land um, that doesn't matter because it will blend in but for those of you that are using the solid tip um, you will hear talk of zooming in like an airplane or whatever it means basically you go in a arch so you don't um, Get the blob. I 
I find it's easier to do fast. If you still struggle with that blob, find a darker place to go. To start, um, like, this is the black outline of the eye. Land here first and then drag out. That might help. Animal portraits are definitely easier than people portraits, so for those that are looking for both. Um, and it's mainly because if you make a mistake on animal fur, it's not going to be as noticeable. Whereas if you give somebody a freckle that doesn't have a freckle, um, I'm thinking that might create some issues if it's a commissioned piece. You'll see, this is, well, I can't get out any further, but, um, this is a start of them. I will go through and darken in here a little bit more, um, but I'm really, I just, to do that, I just go back over everything. Same way I was started with. The animal fur, there's not much shading. Um, you'll find some people do shading. I don't usually. I might a little bit. And it's just like right in here. I'll flatten it out a little bit. And try to get as dark as your references show. Yes, we all worry still, well, at least most of us that I know, always worry 
Okay, if I go darker, am I going to ruin it? Chances are not likely. But what you have to remember is as you go darker, you have to darken other areas too. And I'm calling that it for now. Thank you, and we'll see you later.